Hey everyone, it's Bailey from Make Camp the Midwest, and today I'm going to do a review and show you some before and after shots using this Wet n Wild new Coverall Cream Foundation as well as the Coverall Pressed Powder. These are new, and I don't think they are limited edition, but the displays are slowly starting to come out, so I thought I would try and get this up as soon as possible. That way you could get an idea of how it wears, what I think of it, the results that I've achieved using it, in case you are interested and want to snatch it up while you can if you see one of these, these displays out. So if you want to see all that, please continue watching. So to start I found mine at Kmart. They were in a big long display actually on the floor which is where my Kmart happens to keep our their new inventory, their new limited edition inventory. So that's where I found these. There were I'm not sure how many are in the line, but I was kind of shocked to see that overall it's a very light line. These were probably more towards the darker end of things and this is definitely not my darkest and I would um, venture to say that if I were at my darkest, like my summertime kind of color, I would not be able to fit into that line. So that's something to be cautious of when you're looking at these, is this is probably the second or third to the darkest shade. So it def this is not a line that caters to darker skin tones, but Wet n Wild generally isn't, so I suppose that's nothing new. I believe each of these retailed for around $3.99. Um, neither of them were more than five individually, but I want to say one was $3.99 and one was $2.99. And then I also found uh, the cream foundation had one of those Save a Dollar Now stickers on it, so it ended up being $2.99, I believe. So first I'm going to start with the cream foundation since it was the first product of the two that I applied. And on the back it says, uh, it claims to have all day wear, medium to full coverage, a lightweight satin to matte finish, and Visibrite, trademark complex, reduces the appearance of wrinkles and rejuvenates skin. So I want to tackle all of those claims while also talking about what it did for my skin. So to start, in the winter time, my skin gets paler as most of ours do, but I have combination skin, so in particular I have, I still kind of maintain this oily t-zone area but I also get a drier um, chin and so finding especially a foundation that claims to be matte to satin finish doesn't typically wear well on those drier areas so I was a little hesitant to see how this would apply. So I started barefaced. The only thing I had on was moisturizer. I didn't put primer on because I wanted to see how the foundation itself performed and primer can often A, help your foundation stay on for a longer period of time, but also B, help it blend smooth, more smooth, smoother, smoothly? Help it blend smoothly into your skin, more so than if you didn't have a primer on. So I went barefaced with just the moisturizer when I applied this cream foundation first. I also used a brush because that's just what I typically use to buff foundation into my skin. You could use your fingers and it might help it blend in a little more, but I used a brush and at first I had a little bit of trouble with it blending seamlessly into my skin. I could really see those brush marks, but after working it for with it for a little while, I noticed that it started blending in really well and by the time everything was all buffed in, it looked really nice. I was happy with the coverage and it really is probably the most full coverage of the Wet n Wild foundations I've ever tried. And to give you an idea of what I've tried, if you yourself are a Wet n Wild foundation fan, um, here is what I have in my Wet n Wild arsenal. The Intuitive Blend Foundation has primer on foundation, but I view it as more of a tinted moisturizer because the coverage is pretty sheer. This is their tinted moisturizer, obviously. It has pretty sheer coverage as well. Um, and then here is probably what is the fullest coverage foundation of theirs that I have tried. This is the Ultimate Match Liquid Foundation. And I wasn't a fan of this because it was a little too liquidy. It just wasn't thick enough to give coverage. It kind of stayed a little greasy. And so those are the three that I've tried. And as the cream foundation compares to these, it is more fuller coverage and it really does deliver with, whoops, there that went, with its um, cream or with its satin to matte finish promises. It really does deliver that, I think. Also, you can probably see in the before and after that while it doesn't cover dark circles, I don't expect any foundation to cover dark circles or under eye bags because that's what concealer is for, but it does cover blemishes really well. You can see I have um, still breakouts and a little bit of scarring around my chin area like I always have, although they've gotten better, but I still have a little bit there, and it covered that. I, don't, I didn't feel the need to put any extra concealer on that area because I thought this did a really good job at covering it. I wouldn't call it a full cover 
coverage, but I definitely think it is between medium to full. It's a little bit more than, definitely more than this one, but not as much as, say, Estee Lauder's Double Wear. It's not anywhere near that, but I still like it, and so I especially love it for winter skin, when it's a little more sallow, um, you have a little more discoloration shining through, especially in your under eye area, and so you need that extra coverage. I think this is a great foundation for that. Now let's talk about all day wear. This is my second time of wearing this foundation, and as I said before, I didn't wear a primer, so I didn't wear anything that would extend the life of it unnaturally so. And I did find that it wore all day, it didn't get patchy, it didn't kind of fall apart or melt down. Granted, it is winter, so there wasn't a whole lot of melting down to do, but even still, I did notice all day wear. Now the last claim here talks about the Visibrite complex that reduces the appearance of wrinkles and rejuvenates skin. I can neither confirm or deny any of this just because I, it's, it's a complex that they have made up and trademarked, so I don't know what the science is behind it or what it is physically supposed to do to your skin. I don't really notice any more brightness to my skin than any other foundation has it given to it, and I don't have the wrinkles or fine lines to rejuvenate to tell a difference. So I can't really speak too much on that. Uh, what I can tell you is that because it's more of a matte to satin finish, it will give more of a soft focus effect to fine lines and wrinkles. It won't enhance them like a more dewy foundation might. At the same time though, um, if you have particularly dry skin, a matte to satin finish might also sink in them and kind of collect into your fine lines. So there's really no way that I can tell you that without actually having experienced it. You will just have to see for yourself. All right, now let's talk about the pressed powder. And this came in three shades, I want to say, just light, medium, and dark. And surprisingly enough, I am closer to the medium shade than I am the light shade. So as I said before, this is a line that truly does cater to the very light skin tones, which is great because I know not many drugstore foundations do. However, it has, I mean, it's nowhere near as deep as it could be. So that's one downside to it, or a plus side if you are have super light skin. Anywho, I am a medium in the pressed powder, and this claims to wear all day, give you a radiant weightless finish, and also has the same Visibrite complex that reduces wrinkles and replenishes skin. I'm going to claim the same results I did before with the Visibrite thing, just because I don't have the fine lines and wrinkles to report on, I'm, I can't really tell you how that works for my skin. Um, but I can tell you that as far as translucent powders go, it is very smooth and creamy and not chalky at all, which is great considering it's a lower end drugstore powder, because sometimes that, that can be the case where you just have chalk face whenever you try and put on kind of a lower end drugstore makeup. I, because I tend to stick to putting powder in my T-zone, that's exactly what I did here, just because I wanted to see how this would wear for me. So I would pat it under my T-zone, I used it to set my concealer, and then went down as well along my chin. I also placed it on the drier areas of my chin, even though, you know, powder can emphasize it. I wanted to see how it would actually go onto dry patches, and I have to say I didn't notice any wonkiness. There was no dry, flaky texture. It didn't emphasize the flakes. So to me that showed it really was a, a super smooth powder without being chalky or chunky for that matter. Sometimes you can have larger pills that come off of your powder that just kind of sit on the skin and I didn't notice that at all with this one. So those are pretty much my thoughts on the new Wet n Wild foundation and powder. Overall I have to say I recommend both of these things for a myriad of skin types. I mean I think an oily skin type would enjoy this simply for the mattifying effect. It really is matin, matin, matte to satin finish and it gives really good coverage. Like I said it's not going to clear your dark circles but rarely will a medium to full coverage foundation do that unless like like I said, it's like Estee Lauder's Double Wear. So I really like this. I told you it performed really well in my T-zone as well as the dry patches on my skin. It didn't emphasize the patchiness, so I would say it's even good for dry to combo skin. Now if you have really dry skin, you might want to take the precaution of using a heavier moisturizer underneath, but I'd say that would be the case with any matte foundation you'd encounter. So uh, I'd say it's not too drying, and obviously as a matte to satin foundation, it's not by any means dewy. So I really enjoy it myself and I would recommend it to a lot of different skin types. Likewise, this Cover All Powder Foundation isn't drying. I, it didn't emphasize my dry patches and it really did keep my foundation on when I put it in my T-zone, which tends to get oilier throughout the day. Now, it's not so much now that it's winter. However, during a long work day, anyone's going to get a little oilier in their T-zone if they tend to do so. So I, it did 
function really well as a mattifying powder and a setting powder to keep my foundation on. And then you take all that into consideration along with the price, and I have to say that they are pretty worth it. So if you find these, I would encourage you uh, to pick them up, especially if you find those save a dollar instantly here because that makes them, you know, $2.99, maybe $3.99 a piece, and that's unbeatable considering you can get two found or a foundation and a setting powder both for under, what, seven or eight bucks. It's just a steal. So those are my thoughts on these two products. If you're at your local drugstore, grocery store, the beauty section, wherever you are, I recommend you try them out. Like I said, I haven't really encountered any downfalls besides the lack of shades on the darker end of the spectrum. But besides that, it really, it's a nice medium to full coverage foundation for not a lot of cash. So if you're interested in checking that out, you happen to like medium to full coverage foundations with matte to satin finishes, I recommend it. So overall, two thumbs up for these two products. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about my experience and what I think of these, as well as some comparisons of other Wet n Wild foundations and the before and after of the application. So please subscribe if you haven't already, just that button right here or down wherever you're watching it. I don't know. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.